Welcome True Hope family. Welcome online. Welcome here. It is good to gather. We will, uh, we will start with a word of prayer in a minute, but I wanted to give us some announcements. We, had, we always start with some songs, which we've done. We had um, Our God Reigns by uh, Israel and uh, the new breed and we did in christ alone and pour your spirit out it's good to praise the lord right praise the lord together but i wanted to tell us a few things coming up we will have some different sundays coming up uh in one in june one in uh, July, well, no, one in July, June is over, one in July, one in August, and one in September. So uh, in July 24th, we're actually going to have a picnic. Most likely, hopefully not here, pray for fantastic weather, and we'll be at the park, the sawmill uh, park over there, and we will just have barbecue and we'll bring stuff so that'll be great and we'll do some games august 7th we're going to the mariners so i don't know who they're playing but i do need to know if you want to go tickets are only 19 dollars, and so if that's something you cannot swing then you let us know and we will cover that but if you want to go i'm gonna have people here fill out a card but online um send us an email or um, note it in the comments or something and let us know that you uh, want to go and i will put the email to contact us in the video description on august 21st we're going to have a scavenger hunt again all of those uh, will start here at this location in Preston, and then we're gonna go do things. So the scavenger hunt will be based on finding things, uh, based on a picture you're receiving, you have to take the, the compliment picture, and then we're going to do that, and we're gonna end up with lunch at Small Fries. Now, I can't eat there because they have everything gluten, but I can have their milkshakes. So just for that, it's worth it. <laughs> I love their milkshakes. <laughs> and then September 18th, we are going to do Carnival Day and barbecue again at Sawmill Park. So you note those, we'll make sure that they get on. There's coming for that, and I'll, I'll note it on the website. So we want to make sure everybody's involved. Then July 16th, we're helping Raging River with their work day. And so there's going to be, be blah, blah, blah. there's going to be people here from 8 to 4. We do not have to be here from 8 to 4. Just it's Saturday, July 16th. Yes, two weeks from yesterday. So um, they have been super gracious and kind and allowing us to meet here and so flexible that we want to pay that back. So not anybody who can make it, great. If it's not something you can do, no worries. All right, I think that's it. Am I missing anything? Well, then let's start with prayer and we'll jump into our message. Lord Jesus, it's in you alone and through you alone that we even have a right to come to the Father. And we praise you and thank you. God, would you pour your spirit out? Would you give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive what you have for us today? Would you be with us, Jesus? Would you hold us, strengthen us, walk with us, show us your word? Holy Spirit, would you reveal truth? And Father God, would you just hold us? Because life gets hard and things are not often the way we would imagine it. But you are good all the time and it's going to be okay when we rest in you. So with all that, Lord, would you allow this day to be just the way you have intended. Would you help us receive what you have for us? We'll give you all glory and praise in Jesus' name, amen. So today's title is, Wow, God, you are amazing. <laughs> I mean, he is, right? Wow, I mean, he's so good. And, um, and we say that and Christians say that, but sometimes I think we forget that it's actually real. And we've been traveling and ex and last week we learned that Moses went up and down that mountain how many times? Do you remember? Three. Times. Three. Like, I never knew that. 
yeah, four almost, like three, three times up, three times down, and so wild, right? And then the mountain, God came down on the mountain, and on the way home, Fred and I were talking about it, and he said, it had to be there, because it was the wilderness. Remember, wilderness was not necessarily a sandy desert, but a place that was untouched by humans. Do you remember that? And of course God would come down there, because God couldn't be anywhere that wasn't holy. And so an untouched place that he had made was still holy and he could come down on that mountain. I thought that was an awesome insight. So there God shows up. And we're going to, into chapter 20 today and it's the Ten Commandments. It's the dreaded Ten Commandments. But you know what? We have to remember something. Before God told us, his people, how to live, he showed to have a, up to have a relationship. He didn't tell you how to live so you can have a relationship. That's what we do. That's religion, but that's not God. God actually called his people, dragged them out of slavery, right? Brought them to the desert, brought them to a safe place, came down, presented a covenant. And a covenant is an agreement with, between two parties to have a relationship. And with that came some rules. And it, uh, with it came... Um, sacrifice because they could, wouldn't be able to keep the rules but God showed up to start a relationship through the covenant that's what he did first and so in, in chapter 20 we read this and God spoke all these words saying okay before I go there the the mind-blowing thing that I learned mind-blowing for me anyway that I learned studying for chapter 19 and 20, and I wasn't sure how I was going to divide it up, what I was going to speak on on what Sunday, but just wrestling through 19 and realizing Moses didn't just go up the mountain, stay on the mountain, came down the mountain. That's always what I thought, even though I've read the Bible plenty of times. And so 20 was even more mind-blowing. I mean, where do we think God gave him, where was Moses when God gave him the Ten Commandments? Yeah, but what did we learn in Sunday school? Where was he? On the mountain. On the mountain. <laughs> huh, that's not what the text says. So God had come down. He had, Moses had brought the people to the mountain. They're near the mountain. They are told not to get too close to the mountain, right? Or touch it because they were going to die. And in that scene, I remember it's lightning and smoke and fire and thunders and earthquake. And a loud trumpet blast that kept getting louder and louder. Remember, all that is going on. And in that scene, God spoke all these words. Everybody heard them, not just Moses. He spoke it to all the people for them to hear. And he says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The words he's using there is, in the Greek, it's what Jesus says in chap, uh, John, where he says, I am, is Jehovah, Yahweh. So he says, I am the Lord, Yahweh, your God, Elohim. And so he is making it very clear. He is the God of gods, the Lord of lords. And what did this God do for them? He brought them out of bondage into this place. So God saved them before there was any covenant. That's big for us. Relationship came first. God's saving relationship with us does not rest on us, does not rest on keeping commandments, and does not rest on works. And, re and religion is all about those things. It's up to me to keep the rules of this religion and... Uh, work and that's how I get saved and this is not our God he didn't he didn't ask for anything because we can't save ourselves right it's not about working he came down we don't have to climb up so he is saying how it is I am the Lord I brought you out I saved you now here's the deal of the covenant here's how we're gonna have a relationship there are some behavior rules so number one you shall have no other gods before me. Meaning, no other gods, gods at all. Now, and we might go, well, I don't have a shrine in my house. I don't have, you know, I don't visit another temple. But we can have other gods. 
Yeah, cell phone. <laughs> you know, money, pleasure, uh, yourself, right? My own, what I want to do, it's a whole bunch. So you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down to them nor serve them and he says the same thing again for i the lord your god same you know yahweh elohim am a jealous god now not jealous as in petty like us but zealous zealous for our relationship zealous for our love zealous for us to be made pure and continues, visiting the iniquity or the sin of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. Now note, oftentimes two, three, four generations lived in one house, right? So God isn't mean, but if you hate him and your whole household, I don't know if you came from a place or you've seen people where they want nothing to do with God, the entire community is affected by that, right? The entire family but showing mercy to thousands of generations to those who love me and keep my commandments. God is so much more about love and connection and deep togetherness than he is about hate. But there is a consequence to turning your back on God. So you shall ha have no carved image. You shall not take, number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you should do all your work, all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God, and, it sh and in it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your strang the strangers within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, made it holy. Now, this, the first th four commandments are about God. But the Sabbath day is God desiring to give us peace and rest. Now, there's some Christians who think we absolutely have to do that on Sunday. Some think it has to be on Saturday. God is not no longer prescribing that. In the New Testament, Jesus makes it clear. Basically, every day is a Sabbath day because we're free in Jesus. But we still need rest. So sometimes Sundays is not like, you know, firefighters, police officers, you know, um, people in the medical profession, any of us may have to work on a Sunday. That's okay. Take another day. Because the point is, stop. Stop working. Stop striving. Sit. Rest. Be with God. Make God a priority. And Jesus did make it clear the things we can do. We're not just supposed to sit still and do nothing per se. But it's not about striving and providing for yourself. All right. Um, Five, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. This is the only commandment with a promise. So the last six are about relationships with people amongst each other. Number six is you shall not murder because God created life and he saves the lives of people. He doesn't take lives from people unless, you know, in certain situations. Seven, you shall not commit adultery, because God is faithful. You shall not steal, because everything belongs to God. So if you take something that is mine, you're stealing from God because it's His, right? It's really His. Not you shall bear false witness against your neighbor. God is truth. And then you shall not cover your neighbor's house, you shall not cover your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Because God provides for you and supplies all you need, so you don't need to covet something that belongs to someone else. So, interesting, I learned that these are the Ten Commandments as listed in the scriptures. This is, the, this is in the Hebrew text. But not all Christian... Not all people who follow Jesus have the same Ten Commandments. So that's crazy. So that's something to think about. Um, 
but I am going to revisit these in following weeks because then I'm going to tie it to what Jesus tells us in the New Testament. So I'm just skipping over them. And yeah, there they are. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning, the flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. So all this is happening. They heard all these words that, you, uh, that the, the Lord spoke. And their response isn't, oh my goodness, yes God, we will. Their response is, they trembled and stood far off. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but not let God not speak to us lest we die. We don't want to hear from him anymore. <laughs> you know, make him stop. <laughs> you go talk to him. This is too scary. They didn't have any background in this either. Not that Moses did, but in Egypt, you didn't, those gods didn't speak. They were real gods, right? And Moses said to the people, do not fear. Now, interestingly, Hebrews 12, 21 tells us that Moses also trembled with fear in this time. But he's saying, do not, choose not to fear, right? For God has come to test you to see how you believe in him and that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. Like if God, we talked about this last week or a couple weeks ago, if, we, if God is our buddy, how seriously are we going to take his commandments? It's just suggestions, right? And they're not really the 10 suggestions. Ted Turner, some of you remember who he is. He rewrote these as suggestions, the 10, you know, commitments or something. No, 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 no. This is what God says. And it's God knows, like if you read these not as a you shall not, but rather what is behind it, you realize it gives you a perfect relationship with God and you will live in a perfect community with each other, right? It's about loving God and loving each other. The Ten Commandments are all about that. And that's what Jesus said. So the people stood far off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Now, some people think he went up again. I don't know if that's true, but later he goes up again. And then to tie into what Fred um, suggested may have happened, why a sign in. Then the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I've talked with you from heaven. They all have seen it. You shall not make anything to be with me. Gods of silver or gods of gold, you shall not make for yourselves. An altar of earth you shall make for me. And you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone. For if you use your tool on it, you have profaned it. You have not made it. Nor shall you go up by steps to my altar that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. Because if you're climbing up and we're standing below you, you know, we could see you're up your skirts. We don't want that. Um, but it goes to show that even the altar, God just wanted them to use the stuff he had made that no human had profaned or touched or made, defiled, right? God is laying down how holy he is and that a relationship with him though he is inviting them to this relationship requires us realizing that god is holy absolutely unapproachably holy but he wants it, we learned in exodus 19 he said Indeed, if you obey my voice and keep my covenants, then you shall be my special treasure uh, above all people, for the earth is mine. And that's the invitation to us. If you will take, do your part of my covenant, and we're in the New Testament times, we are post-Jesus, it's not keeping the Ten Commandments perfectly. Those are still rules to live by. Jesus did not make them go away. But there is the invitation to say, I want a relationship with you, but I am a holy God. So you can't kind of wink, wink, you know, not, not, pretend to have a relationship. It is going to require all of you, all of me. The New Testament tells us I'm not my own. I've been bought with a prize. If you belong to Jesus, you no longer belong to yourself. Now, how does it tie to Jesus? Well, Jesus gave his life. 
Jesus is faithful. G Jesus gives life, right? Do not murder. Jesus gives life. Do not commit adultery. Jesus is faithful. He will always be with us, he says. Do not lie. Jesus is truthful. And Jesus came to earth like God did coming down to Mount Sinai. All this is modeling. He came down on this mountain and Jesus came to earth. We don't have to climb up. I'm glad I don't have to climb up 7,500 feet up Mount Sinai to go visit with God. I don't know if I'd see him very often, but we don't have to climb up because God came down when Jesus came down. Isn't that great that the God of the universe loves us so much that he came down to us people? And Jesus came to uphold our side of the covenant. None of us can keep the Ten Commandments. None of us can measure up to what God's perfect standards are. And he knew that because that's why there was an altar. That's why there were going to be sacrifices. Here's my commandments, but there's no way you can keep them. So I'm making a way for you to make it right with me on a regular basis. I'm personally glad I don't have to sacrifice animals on an altar. I would not like that very much. But Jesus our side of the covenant that we couldn't do. Jesus obeyed the commandment perfectly. I can't even get through a day probably without messing up somewhere. So we're not supposed to rewrite the rules. Like a lot of make it right by God by changing the rules. No. Right. Well, he's a, you've already proven yourself to God. You're a sinner, <laughs> you know, just like the rest of us. But Because there's the provision of Jesus. So Jesus' obedience to all the covenant, law, covenant laws has been put on our account. So if your back, bank account was empty or maybe in the red, anybody ever experienced having less money, no, not enough money? Jesus paying all the covenant laws, keeping all the laws, and then dying for our sins, his obedience is now credited to our account. I mean, it's just a different way of thinking about it. And so the bill is paid. It's for those who believe, and it's available to anyone who wants to. And now we get to receive the promises of the covenant if we have Jesus, because God is our God, and we are his people. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? And God, I think, is inviting us to first and foremost realize that He is a good and holy God that wants a relationship with us. I think we know that, but we need to keep remembering it. Because I don't know about you, but even this morning, I'm feeling a little bit off. I don't feel the close connection. And where does my mind automatically go? Between us. I need to do better. I need to be better. I need to, you know, and I'm not thinking I need to work for my salvation, but what did I do that is causing the break in the relationship? But it's a lie. Just my feelings don't match the reality, but it's so easy for Satan to then start making us wonder. And if I wonder if God isn't totally happy with me, what's the next thing I'm going to do? Well, I should repent. <laughs> but what I probably am going to do is take a step back because I missed the connection with God. Even though it's still there, all I have to do is say sorry, right? Even when you don't know what you did. And so Satan then, if he can just get me to back up for a little while, that break, the disconnect, gives him all sorts of room to mess with my heart, to mess with my head, to, to make me grumpy, to be out of sorts, to waste days that I could have just been at peace with Jesus. Anybody else experience this kind of stuff? So it always seems to be a battle still, right? Or we're distracted. Not necessarily by bad things, even by good things. And we don't have time. And yet this God of the universe gave everything so that we could have a relationship with him. So we are going to have communion. And so this is a great time for us to think about where we're at with God. 
and to just all the stuff, all the messes we made, because we make messes, and realize that we probably fell short you know, in one of those commandments or a bunch of those commandments, and all we have to do is say, God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. And it's done if you belong to Jesus. And if you do not yet belong to Jesus, but you desperately want that relationship with God, you want peace and joy, you want to have a God who loves you so much that he paid all, paid it all so you could have him and all that he is, then it means saying, I confess that I'm a sinner. I ask you for your forgiveness. I thank you, Jesus, that you came down and paid for all my sins, kept the commandments perfectly so I can receive life. And I invite you to come into my heart and life so that I can be part of God's family. And so we want to do that as part of communion. And if you're joining us at home, you want to take communion with us and you know Jesus, you've asked Jesus in your heart, then grab juice and uh, something to eat. And Fred will distribute here the last of our gluten-free hard crackers. <laughs> but the scripture tells us not to take communion lightly. And so what we want to do is make sure that we let God examine our hearts. Just ask him, Lord, is there anything in the way between you and me right now? that I can give to you, that you are inviting me to put at your feet. So just spend some time thinking about that. Just leave it. And at home too, just do some business with Jesus. And the beauty is if you're not done, you can pause it. <laughs> pause the video the bread and said um, this is my body he knew what he had come to do give everything he said this is broken for you you eat this bread you are eating my body in remembrance of me night after supper he took the cup and it was the Passover they were celebrating so it was the third or fourth cup and it was the celebration and he said this is the new covenant in my blood as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you will remember my death until I come again I always think of the blood as the life-giving part, the bread as the dying part, and the blood as the life-giving part. He died so I could live. So thank you, Jesus. Who? Jesus, thank you that you gave it all so we could have life. I pray that you would um, help us to never take this lightly, but to realize that you did this in community because you want us to be tied together with you as our head, as body parts, so that we can be one as you and the Father are one. Help us to understand that great mystery and help us to live as people who love you, God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love each other as you have loved us, Jesus. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.